And joining us now is Melanie Campbell. Melanie is the president and the CEO of the National Coalition on Black Civic Participation and a convener of the Black Women's Roundtable. The National Coalition is dedicated to increasing civic engagement and protecting voting rights in black communities. Uh, welcome, Melanie. It's uh, so great that you've joined us here today. Uh, obviously, you've had a stellar um, career, you. over 25 years uh, in public service, helping uh, push for social justice here in Washington. Uh, first off, just wanted to hear more about your background, what would you say is one of your uh, most proudest moments here in Washington? Oh, one of my most, most proudest moments. So first of all, thank you so much for the invitation. Happy Black History Month as we also get ready to gear up for Women's History Month. Uh, great time. Um, I guess one of my most, um, uh, I guess, proudest moments really um, goes back to really, I'm going to say the election cycles, right, of seeing um, in recent times, of course, the first black woman uh, be elected to be vice president of the United States and Kamala Harris, um, but also knowing that we're owning our power. So it's a collective uh, excitement as opposed to just one thing and seeing black women own our power in a way that um, I think in the long run will, will lift the nation at the end of the day as we continue to break barriers um, that have, have long been uh, systemically uh, making it difficult for us to achieve uh, those higher heights. Got it. I know uh, you talked about Vice President Kamala Harris um, and, and that being a huge moment for black women. We know also right now the president uh, has put on the table potentially putting or we know putting a black woman on the Supreme Court, the first uh, in history. Uh, um, are you at all, uh, first off, your reaction to this actually coming to flourish? I know uh, you have been at the forefront of trying to get this accomplished. We know the president uh, put this on the campaign trail that he was going to make sure this happened. And now it looks like they're down to three potential picks and this could happen happen uh, just in a few weeks now. Um, yes, um, we've been working on it even before I came to Washington, D.C., uh, and, and that's been one of those things that black women uh, have been aspiring to see happen. You know, we tried to do it during the Obama uh, administration. We're, we're not successful. So when you think about what that means to be at that table, to have that lived experience uh, at the highest court in the land, we know the issues of racial justice and gender justice, all roads definitely lead through several avenues. And the judicial system is one of those key areas where you can exact justice or you have justice denied. So not being able to see a black woman, 233 years of the of the US Supreme Court, not having that lived experience that comes uh, with being not just an African-American, but being a woman in this nation, I think will, will go well uh, for uh, where women go uh, when it comes to uh, owning our power in, our, in this nation. We have a long way to go when it comes to opportunities for women. And so as, black, as a black woman who carries both of those things with me everywhere I go, I also understand that, that, that it will matter. It doesn't mean just being black for black sake, but the experience of being in this nation, having to walk through and, and find your way through and break through those glass ceilings that, that are there, some of them that, that are very much visible and in some ways very much invisible. Um, it's something I think that will go well for, for that little girl to be able to see. I can be vice president, which means one day I can be president. I can be on the US Supreme Court. Where else can we go as women in this nation as we break those barriers? I'm excited, uh, cautious, because we know that the attacks will come. Whoever is nominated, uh, the confirmation process has never been easy as we break through those barriers. Women of color have a harder time. Um, so we're also um, uh, sober about this exciting moment. It's a process to get to the finish line of actually having that black woman confirmed. I was just going to touch on, we're not at the finish line. You kind of brought up some of the concerns that have already popped up. We've had uh, different members of Congress touch on their concern that the president is using some sort of affirmative action uh, to put forward a black woman on the Supreme Court. I guess just your uh, response to some of the reaction we've already gotten from members uh, who are questioning um, the uh, ability or the uh, ethics, rather, of putting, uh, or specifically saying a black woman should have the next seat on the Supreme Court. Uh, those same people didn't question why there, there had been 
um, uh, mostly white men for 233 years. Um, was that affirmative action? I mean, so what are, we, what are we really saying? We're saying because you identify with someone who has a lived experience that that's a bad thing. And this is a, this is a country that's very, very diverse, but you don't see that. You don't see that in the U.S. Senate. There need to be more women, women of color, people of color uh, in these positions because we're not reflecting. Um, it's not about qualifications. These women who, whose names have been bandied about are exceptionally qualified, but don't have the opportunities. Uh, and so I think for the president of uh, President Biden and the Harris, Biden Harris administration to 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 make a pledge and follow through with it is a is a plus uh, uh, when it comes to elected officials who promise on the campaign trail and find a way not to have happen. Doesn't mean everything that we we're pushing for has happened yet, but this is one of those things, and I think it should be celebrated and. And and, and, and 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 for those who don't uh, like it, you know, then I, I, I don't. I'm going to be, be clear about how, how I say that. I really want them to explain. Well, what is the problem with it being a black woman? That's right. Did you have a problem when it was mostly white men who sat on the, who sit on that bench? You only had a handful uh, that don't fit that bill. Well, yeah, I know you've been is that trying to. Right. And I know you've been key in trying to uh, bring attention uh, to qualified candidates, and now it's being narrowed down. So we'll see how it all plays out uh, in the Senate here in the few weeks when we potentially could start having hearings and hear the questions, I guess, uh, some members of, se of the Senate might have. Uh, but I know another issue you have mobilized around is voting rights. Um, and that's also been at the forefront of the discussion here in Washington, obviously a gridlocked issue uh, in Congress. And I guess the big question everyone's asking at this point is what more can be done. Is this now a grassroots effort? And I guess what would organizations like your own uh, be doing in the next few months as we lead into the midterms? Uh, a couple of things. One, we know we're in the midterms. We have to, we have to organize. We've been encouraging the Justice Department to to make sure that they are able to monitor the elections. So as some of these voter suppression laws uh, have have, have uh, taken effect, uh, be there on the ground in the community where voting is happening to be able to witness uh, the voter suppression in real time that we know will, will happen. Um, the other thing is that. The administration to continue to do everything they can through executive actions, but but the, the Congress still must act. If you weren't able to get things moved, you need to find a way to carve out. At minimum, this is my this is my organization's opinion, at least that you carve out uh, some areas of it. Because when I remember watching um, the, the debate on the floor when they were trying to move the John Lewis voting. Uh, Voting uh, Restoration Act and the Freedom to Vote Act that they combined uh, trying to, to maneuver and couldn't get it done uh, because of rules. Um, that people said, oh, well, uh, uh, I voted. Some of the Republicans said I voted. Uh, yes, I voted for the uh, uh, um, restoration of the Voting Rights Act uh, in 2006. It was five pages. This is 700 pages. Well, find a way to find some element minimally they need to restore the, the the enforcement powers of the voting rights act by dealing with section four and five do that minimally in my opinion i think that needs to happen i think the congress needs to continue to act the president said that he was not going to give up the, um, the con um the, the senator schumer said he was not going to give up us um uh, Speaker of House Nancy Pelosi said that now, so that I think that they have to find a way to find some way to continue to put on the floor opportunities to vote on voting rights in some capacity. As if you can't get the whole, as legislation, sometimes you can't get all what you need, but you need to continue to find a pathway to deal with the legislative fix because we're not getting um, the kind of support that's needed to the, to the, to the uh, Supreme Court uh, at this point. And what's interesting about this situation in particular is this used to be a bipartisan effort, uh, voting rights. I guess, what is your interpretation of what's at play in this moment? Why have we seen such a dramatic switch? And why is this such a partisan issue, the right to protect access to the voter ballot? Well, this didn't just start in this in this moment. It started, uh, quite frankly, with the first African-American president uh, when President Obama was elected in 2008. Two years after that, you had all of these voter suppression laws that began to be put on the books. And I would say after the Shelby versus Holder decision in 2013, uh, 
all we have seen over the last decade now plus is a continuation of 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 um, rolling back the clock on the access to the ballot and to have that voting that. Uh, right protected. And for African Americans in this country, as we are in Black History Month, uh, understand we have always had to have federal intervention to protect our right to vote. So it's never been this moment where we had uh, the freedom, if you will, uh, to vote in this country. Um, so we know we've always had to fight and we will have to continue to fight um, because there are, there are always those who believe that it, it doesn't take uh, um, all of us to, uh, or we don't believe that all of us have the right to uh, have self-determination when it comes to the right to vote and the right to elect candidates of choice or the right to even be, have a fair opportunity to represent. Uh, and that's just not in Congress uh, or, or the Senate or the White House. It's right there in your local community uh, where you were electing both school boards. Um, and so as which is another area that's being under attack these days because of the attack on critical race theory and other things that have nothing to do with K through 12 education. Um, so that's something that history has shown us as we're thinking about history, that we have to keep fighting for it to make sure this democracy is inclusive. And right now, the other part of it is this democracy is really under attack and the fundamental right to vote is what will help to manage th this the opportunity for us to keep a uh, representative democracy, or we can fall into an autocracy, uh, which is happens other places. We think nothing can happen in the United States of America, but we're in this moment uh, right now where we're going to go forward or we're going to go backwards into a place that we've never been. Well, thank you again, Melanie, uh, for, for sharing um, your time and your work, obviously, is so important uh, in the midst of these critical issues that you just pointed out. Um, thank you again for joining us today uh, for this important discussion. Thank you. So thank you much for the, so much for the invitation.